Hey there, Homestead. It's Elizabeth from Community. And we're going to go further into the Website Builder e-commerce videos today. And we're going to talk about the store settings. So first things first, log into the Builder. Once you're logged into the Builder, click on Store on the left panel. And then click on Manage Products and Orders to go into the Store Editor. Once you're in the Store Editor, go ahead and click on Settings on this left menu. And you're going to see two tabs. There's the main settings and the advanced settings. We're going to go through all of them, but we'll go through the main settings first. You can set up the general information for your store, like the company name, address, phone number, currency type, and tax ID. Now, this information is mandatory, but don't worry that it's customer facing. Customers will never see this. Um, so for example, if you ship out of your home, don't worry that customers are going to show up at your door. This is only internal information, but it is required for you to be able to publish your store. So on that note, if you go to publish your store and it won't let you, make sure to double check that you have this information put in. Next is the shipping rate. Now this is the default basic shipping options available in the store. So even if you're using the integrated shipping options we discussed in a previous video, you'll want to still set this up because if for any reason the integrated shipping is not able to process, this is when it's going to fall back on. So you can either choose a flat rate, which has a cost for the first item, cost per additional item, and the minimal order amount for free shipping. So set that up if that's the way you want to go. Or you can do a charge per product where you just set the minimal amount for free shipping and then you actually set up the shipping charges under the individual products right there. So if you choose that option, you will have to go through every product and set up that shipping charge, but technically it is more accurate. You can change the email that we send order notifications to. So every time a customer places an order, we're going to let you know, and this is where you decide what email you want that sent to. And you can enable or disable taxes. If you don't want to charge taxes for some reason, you can turn it off. Um, if you do want to charge taxes, then you keep it on. And it's recommended to keep it on the automatic taxes. That's just going to set the rate for each you know, country or state that it's applying to. But if you have a special circumstance where you need to charge something different than the set rate is, you can turn that off and go set that specifically on your own. So it's up to you, unless you have something really specific you need to do with the taxes, it's really just recommended to leave it on automatic. It's gonna make it so much easier for you and less of a chance that you're gonna not charge the proper taxes. Um, so the last option under main is payment providers. Now we did go over that in a previous video, but just to quickly go over it, it's where you can choose what payment providers you use. And we offer PayPal and Stripe for online payments, and you can choose cash on delivery. Moving on to the advanced settings, you can set up the units of measurement that your store uses. For example, inches or centimeters, if you use pounds or ounces or grams. Um, and you can also set up how your order numbers appear. You can also set up your legal documents and policies like a terms and conditions, privacy policy, refund and cancellation. To add it, you just click add and this is where it goes. We can't make suggestions as to what you should put here. I do suggest if you need help with these documents and policies, you do contact a legal help like a, an attorney. Um, but once you have the documents or the policies, you can add them here. So for tracking, this is if you're using a program to track like the information from your store to make changes based on popularity. We don't provide the scripts for this. This does come from third party programs like Google Analytics, Facebook, or Instagram. But they do provide those codes and you can turn on what specifically you're tracking and paste the script or the analytics code here. And then the results will appear in the program that you got the script from. So if you want to track the conversion rates, stuff like that, you can use that feature. Not everyone is going to, and that's perfectly okay. And then there's the notification email settings. 
You can change the email that you use as your customer support email. And you can also preview and edit the order confirmation, shipping, digital fulfillment, and cancellation email. Now, we do have this set up really specifically to be able to automatically input the proper name, company name, what they ordered. So I don't recommend you change too much in here because you don't want to risk messing those input settings up. Um, but you can make small changes and you can change the title that we refer to your customer in these emails. So you can set that up. And if for any reason you do make changes in here and you find that it's causing issues with those emails that are being sent out, you can always come in here and reset to default, which will put it back to how we first had it set up. And you can also preview the email that you're going to be sent whenever an order is placed. You can't edit this at all. It's really basic, but you can see what it's going to look like. And then email design is where you can set up your logo that's put on the emails that we were just talking about and the colors that are used. You use the color picker so you can just click and drag to find the specific shade. And you can use the slider to find the color that you're wanting. Or to make it easier, you can find the exact color code for the color you're wanting and paste it in here. And then lastly, you can set up the language that you're using. We do have three available. Once you're done, click Save and Publish Changes. And then the final option in this page is the integrated shipping options. We do have an entire video dedicated to this topic, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it. But it's the way you set up the advanced shipping options, which goes through the third-party company, Shippo. Um, if you have questions about that, please do refer to our other video on integrated shipping or our community article on the same topic. So those are the settings that are available in Website Builder eCommerce. It will be so beneficial to you if you just take the time to go through all of these settings and get them set up the proper way. Um, it'll help you when it comes time to publishing the store and once you know customers are ordering products, you'll have no issues if you've already gone through all of these settings and set them up the proper way. Um, just a way for you to streamline this process for you. And once you've added the products and you've done the shipping and you've done the settings, you should be about ready to publish your store. So um, if you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments. But other than that, happy building.